Welcome back. So in the last video, I told you about the Gabor transform and how you can use it to compute the spectrogram, which is essentially a time frequency diagram that tells you not just what is the frequency content of a signal, but at what points in time do those frequencies turn on and turn off, okay? So in some sense, it can be a little bit more useful than just doing a raw Fourier transform because a Fourier transform uh, strips out information about when those frequencies occurred. Um, if this was a power spectral density, for example, a PSD as a function of frequency, but the Gabor transform, in, cons, uh, in contrast, by computing a windowed Fourier transform as that window shifts in time, you can see how the frequencies evolve in time. So here I'm going to code this up in MATLAB for a couple of examples and just show you how easy it is to play around uh, with the spectrogram. Okay? So here I'm creating a simple two-second audio clip with a delta T of uh, 0.001, so one kilohertz sampling. And in MATLAB, there's this built-in chirp command. So in this chirp command, I'm going to go from frequency F0 at time 0 to F1, a new frequency at time 1, so low frequency to a high frequency, using a quadratic path. So it's going to go like low frequency to high frequency, like that. Okay, um, and here I've actually created my own uh, version. This is just to show you that you can create your own chirp. So you could use the chirp command or you could just build it yourself. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually play the sound using the sound command and I'm gonna plot the signal just to show you what the chirp looks like. Then we're gonna plot the spectrogram using the one line spectrogram command in MATLAB. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start this out. Okay, good, so I'm going to run my... Okay, cool, you can hear that. Um, I'll run it again in a minute. This just shows you the signal in time. It starts out relatively low frequency, and then the frequency gets higher and higher and higher. I'm gonna run this one more time so you can hear it. Boop, like that, okay. And now it's really easy uh, to work the spectrogram in MATLAB. And all of these uh, kind of different ar uh, arguments of the spectrogram, you should look at the documentation to figure out exactly what they are. Um, so for example, this is the, the sampling, uh, one over the sampling rate. There are like how much overlap to have between the windows, how wide should this Gabor transform be, and how much overlap uh, should it use, things like that. And so I'm going to plot this spectrogram of this X signal so you can see how cool it looks. Okay, so this is the spectrogram here. Uh, kind of bright blue means that there's more power. So the, the vertical axis here is basically the power spectrum at an instant in time. And you can see this power spectrum evolving in time as we go from low frequency to high frequency as time evolves from zero to two seconds. Okay, so this goes from low frequency up to high frequency. Uh, really, really useful. Not, it doesn't tell you just what frequencies are there, but it tells you at what point in time those frequencies are there. You can see that there's some kind of banded artifacts here from the numerics of how the spectrogram is computed. You don't really have to worry about that because they're very, very small. They have a very uh, low magnitude. This is in a decibel scale. Um, so those kind of red and orange peaks are really, really small numerical artifacts. What you should be paying attention to is this bright blue energetic peak in the power spectrum as it evolves in time. Okay, now I thought this would be kind of cool. This is something we do uh, in our book, Data Driven Science and Engineering, uh, where this example comes from in chapter two, is I thought it would be fun to also plot what does the Fourier transform look like? What if I just did the naive Fourier transform instead of this kind of time frequency uh, spectrogram? So I'm gonna show you that plot here. Okay, so you could just do the normal thing where you compute the, the FFT of the entire audio signal all at once and then plot its power spectrum. Okay, so I'm gonna plot his power spectrum here. And you can see that what I get um, is not necessarily that informative. I do see that there's a pretty big, big peak at low frequency here, but there's all of this frequency content between about you know, 50 and 200 hertz, okay? And what's really kind of cool is if you knock this over on its side, so if you transpose this, so instead of plotting frequency uh, and power, if I plot, it the other way around, so frequency and power. And I'll change my X label to a Y label now. 
Now this is basically the power spectrum knocked over on its side. And you're gonna see that essentially the power spectrum is the cumulative distribution of my spectrogram. Okay, so this is just the Fourier transform of the whole audio signal, and then here's the spectrogram. And you can kind of convince yourself that if you averaged over time, what you would get is this power spectrum plot over here. So the reason there's a big peak at around 50 hertz is because this was a quadratic chirp, so it spent the most time here at about 50 hertz. So that's why you would get the biggest peak here at 50 hertz, and then it tapers off and gives uh, power at all of these frequencies from 50 to 200 hertz, okay? So the regular Fourier transform does give you information. It essentially is a cumulative average over time of the spectrogram. The spectrogram in some sense is taking this power spectrum and expanding it out to tell you when those frequencies turned on in time. I think that's really cool, okay? I'm gonna show you another example. This is going back to that Beethoven uh, piece. So here uh, I have a Beethoven, the Beethoven sonata that I pulled from an MP3 and converted the first 40 seconds into this mat file. And I have a bunch of commented out code here that you could use to pull out the MP3 uh, file using MP3 read. Uh, and I also have all of this code here that shows you how you could actually compute the spectrogram yourself using this STFT, the short time Fourier transform. So this is kind of the guts of the spectrogram code that you could work yourself. Uh, but here I'm just gonna show you kind of the one line spectrogram output for the first 40 seconds of this Beethoven uh, sonata. And I think I should probably try to play the sound for you. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, sometimes this doesn't work live. So this is the spectrogram of the first 40 seconds of that Beethoven sonata. So again, on the y-axis is essentially our power spectrum as it evolves in time. And you can see these kind of orange peaks are where there's a lot of sound power, where there's a lot of, of, of a high amplitude noise, and those correspond to like chords on the piano and, uh, and individual keys being played in a progression. So you can see, you know, kind of all of this interesting uh, structure here as the frequency content evolves in time. Let's see if I can actually make a sound here. Um, so what is the sound command I need? It's sound of my signal, comma, the sampling rate. So I could probably just do sound of uh, y, comma, 24, uh, comma, fs. I think I already saved this in my file. fs is the sampling rate. Okay, and it's gonna play the first 40 seconds of that, uh, of that sonata. And, and so kind of each of those chords progressions is happening you know, in time and you can actually see, uh, see the frequency content as it's evolving. So I think that's really, really neat. Um, this is also just a great, um, a great sonata and now you can kind of decompose it and start to see what it looks like. In the book, this is one of my favorite diagrams uh, I've made, is essentially this is the first two bars of this sonata. And what you can do is you can look at the first 40 seconds of your spectrogram. You can kind of zoom in in these uh, orange and blue boxes to these particular progressions right here. You can actually see the patterns um, both in the, in, the, in, the, in the bars and in the spectrogram. And then if you zoom into this band around uh, one kilohertz here, I have color coded each of these, uh, these lines by different keys on the piano. And so you can actually see that, first of all, this piano is in tune. Um, and also that, you know, kind of which keys are being hit at which points in time. So I think that's really neat. Um, again, if you go to my code, all of that commented out stuff shows you how to compute uh, the frequencies corresponding to these notes and make diagrams kind of like this yourself. Okay, so the spectrogram is a really, really powerful tool that allows you to, um, to take audio signals or just data signals in general and break them down into these time frequency plots that can be very, very illuminating uh, and very powerful. Okay, thank you.